Welcome, welcome to day seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Day seven of 12 Days of Curtis. Thank you for joining me tonight. I am so glad that you're here. And big, massive fist bumps and shout outs to all of the people who have been hanging out with me since night one on December 13. You guys are our rock stars. And for those of you who have joined on the other nights, I'm so glad that you're here. This has been a really fun time trying to celebrate some fun facts about Christmas and about me, celebrating favorite Christmas movies, and then also celebrating some favorite Christmas music of mine, particularly off of my uh, original Christmas album, Just For You. And I have thoroughly enjoyed hanging out with all of you online and putting in all this work to make this show happen. It's been a really great experience for me, and I'm so glad that you're along the ride with me. And we are going to get started tonight. Are you ready for the first thing? Because you know what it is. We're one, two, three, on the seventh day of Christmas, my true love gave to me seven swans of swimming. Now, <clears throat> let's just pause there for a second. So, <clears throat> whoever wrote this song had a huge affinity for birds. Because I just cannot think of why you would give swans, geese, calling birds, French hens, turtle doves, partridges. I just cannot think... Oh, excuse me. There's just one partridge. But I just cannot think of why you would celebrate that much about birds. So maybe you're a bird lover. Maybe you um, have a bird farm. I have no idea. But um, I am a very different person. <laughs> I don't have any birds at all. And there's certainly not seven swans um, living in my backyard uh, by any means. I don't even have a lake or any water for them to swam around in. Or... At any rate. Um, so I wanted to share with you not seven swans or seven birds that I have in my life because I have no birds in my life. But I do have seven things that I think you'll find kind of interesting. So um, last night on night six, we talked about six different countries that I visited around the world. And so I thought, well, it's only appropriate to talk about all the states that I've lived in, <laughs> which ironically has been seven. I have lived in seven different states <laughs> in my lifetime. Here we go. So... Many of you guys know that I was born in Minnesota. I grew up in a very small town outside of Minneapolis. And then I came to college here uh, in Minneapolis uh, for undergrad. <clears throat> and while I was in college, I did two ministry internships. One was in Montgomery, Alabama. So I lived in Montgomery, Alabama in the deep south <laughs> for a summer. My rear view mirror fell off of my windshield because the glue that was holding it there melted because the sun was so hot. <laughs> so the second ministry internship that I did in college was in Stevens Point, Wisconsin. So I lived in Wisconsin for um, a stretch of time, which is where I met Morier. Our relationship started there. And then I eventually moved back there after graduation from North Central. And I uh, took a job there and we got married there. After we got married, we moved back from Wisconsin to Minnesota, and we spent a few years here, and then we moved to Kansas City. Now, a few of you guys might know that Kansas City borders both Missouri and Kansas, and so we lived on the Missouri side, and then when I got into grad school, we moved to the Kansas side of the metro, and so we lived in both Missouri and Kansas while we were living in Kansas City for a stretch of time. Um, right when Ethan was born, we moved back from uh, Kansas to Minneapolis, and so we were living in Minnesota again for a number of years. Nathaniel and Gabriel were both born here. And then um, at the beginning of 2014, we moved out west to Oregon because I was um, ready for a job change and doing some things. And um, I found a job, ironically, um, in South Chicagoland. So we moved from Central Oregon to Illinois, uh, where I uh, took a job in South Chicagoland for four years. And then we moved back from Illinois to Minnesota in the summer of 18, and we live in Minneapolis now. I absolutely love Minneapolis. It's my favorite city on the planet. It's this magical place of um, urban international life and 
art and music and green space conservation kind of colliding all together, and I absolutely love it. So I'm proud to be from Minneapolis. I love living in Minnesota. Um, there are things about the culture that challenge me here, and there are things that inspire me, and it's um, it's a good place for our family to be. So currently, we live in Minnesota, and those are the seven states that I have lived in my entire life so far. And those are the fun facts of tonight. And now, 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 it is time for, you guessed it, the movie of the night. And so, my movie of the night is very special because we have a character who wants to take things from people but he has a heart change and you all know and love the fact that his heart grew three sizes that day and so my movie of the night is The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Now this particular movie is quite unique in that for many years, this is all we had. In fact, before we even had the DVD, it was only available on network television. In fact, in 1966, CBS was the only network to broadcast um, the movie uh, for the public. So for many years, this version was all we had. But then in 2000, Jim Carrey's version, the live action version of How the Grinch Stole Christmas came out. And all of a sudden it was like the beauty and the wonder and the set design and the costuming of like the Wizard of Oz came together with like this Christmas movie of the Grinch who stole Christmas. So it was like eye candy to see this magical, magical land of Christmas and beauty and glitter and snow and uh, very fictional characters kind of come to life. And now we have this character who's larger than life by Jim Carrey on our screens. But then in 2018, Illumination put out a CGI version of The Grinch. So now we don't have just one, we have three versions of The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. And I'm curious, which one is your favorite? I have a favorite, and some of you might know what it is, but I wanna know what your favorite is. So please put in the comments which version is your favorite, and we're gonna cast a vote and see which version wins. And I hope my version wins. We'll just see. And that, my friends, is the movie of the night. So put your favorite version in the comments below and we'll see who dukes it out. Well, for my song of the night, I want to share with you one of the songs off of my album that uh, I put out in 2015. This is a traditional Christmas carol that all of us know and love. It actually has two names. One of them is Green Sleeves and the other one is What Child Is This? And I have always heard this song as kind of like this like swing jazz arrangement. So I took the time to uh, really work with my producer to create a kind of a big band jazz kind of style uh, approach to this song. And I want to show you a little live clip and then I want to play you the track right here at the end of the song. So here we go. Thanks for joining me on night seven of 12 Days of Curtis. I'm so grateful that you chose to spend time with me online tonight. 
As you guys know, I'm a professional musician and this is what I do for a living. So I'd love you to drop me a digital tip or a donation of some kind in one of my digital cash apps. They're available on Cash App, Venmo, and PayPal. And you can look me up as Curtis Wayne Hunt. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow for day eight of 12 Days of Curtis. Bye! I'm a little bit of a bad